Engineering Communications recently spoke with Dr. Andre Mazzolani and Dr. Stephen Berg to learn more about NASA's Artemis program. I'm Stephen Berg. I am a part-time lecturer in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department here teaching classes in space flight, rocketry, and the space environment. Uh, I'm Andre Mazzolani. I'm a professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering here at NC State. I teach courses in dynamics um, and space exploration systems, uh, introduction to space flight. What is Artemis One? Yeah, so Artemis One is the first test flight of what is known as the Space Launch System. And so Artemis One uh, will carry you know, um, several different payloads on a trajectory toward the moon. Okay, it will not enter moon's orbit, um, but it is very much a test flight of the, again, the Space Launch System uh, that will eventually launch a crewed capsule on Artemis II um, and the, the Artemis missions beyond that. What is significantly different about this mission compared to the Apollo mission? One way you could look at this is when we explored the South Pole and the North Pole, you know, the original missions there was basically, can we get there? And you have these explorers, they went to the North Pole, kind of planted the flag and then came back. And the same with the South Pole. And then later we went back and, you know, built a whole, you know, base at, at, the, at the South Pole where we do exploration and science and so forth. So I think there's maybe some analogy there where the Apollo missions were basically kind of equivalent to, you know, going to the South Pole or the North Pole and then, you know, showing we could do it. And then this mission is more intended to be what we're going to establish a permanent presence um, on the moon. Why has it taken so long to return to the moon? Yeah, it, it's not really, it's really not really a technology issue. Um, obviously we could, we have the capability to do it, you know, 50 years ago. So it's, I think it's more a matter of, you know, priorities, what NASA wanted to do. Um, I think for a long time, there was a lot of, you know, they, they have, they obviously have their planetary exploration where they send robotic spacecraft. Then they had the low Earth orbit, um, learning how to work and, and live in space in the space station. Then you had people that wanted to go back to the moon. Um, and then you had people that wanted to go to Mars. You kind of had these four, um, you know, major, you know, kind of ideas within NASA about what they wanted to do. And then you had, of course, all the, you know, kind of Earth orbiting satellites that are basically look, doing remote sensing and so forth. So they have a lot of different things on their plate. And so it's kind of a matter of, you know, where do they take, what resources do they take? What are some of the challenges to going back? Like I said, we've been there before. Uh, so technologically, we know we can do it. Um, and the biggest challenge is, is getting, you know, significant amounts of payload or equipment um, to the moon to really, you know, do uh, again significant amounts of of science, um, and again establish a presence that ultimately is a stepping stone on the way to Mars. You know, space engineering is largely system engineering, so you have all these complicated systems that all have to work together, and so you you have all these individual components that you can test, and you know they work. Um, but the only way to know if it really works together as a system is to actually you know, put the system together and, and, and fly it. And so I think that's why this Artemis One is, you know, so critical to the whole program because it's really the first all up system where you're going to be testing basically all the major components of the system. How will this mission prepare NASA for missions to Mars? The intention in sort of demonstrating the architecture that we discussed um, and again, you have multiple vehicles, multiple rendezvous scenarios, you're rendezvousing at a space station in orbit around the moon. All of those technologies are going to be necessary to get us um, to Mars and back. Okay, we, you know, any way you look at it, um, it's very difficult to do without refueling in orbit, for example, um, which we will demonstrate during the Artemis program. Um, it's way easier if you're starting, you know, from Earth orbit or definitely lunar orbit, um, like we're going to be doing um, in the Artemis program. Um, and then also, you know, establishing bases, um, being able to use resources that are available in harsh environments such as the moon and eventually Mars. Um, all of those things are, again, major uh, stepping stones toward um, achieving 
flight and eventual landing on Mars. What do researchers expect or hope to find? The primary, you know, goals for Artemis 1 and 2 are, are less scientific and more of a uh, demonstrating the system, you know, will work as intended. Uh, there are science payloads um, on Artemis 1. I mean, if you're flying out there, you might as well carry something useful. Uh, as well as for Artemis 2, Artemis 2 will be crewed. Um, so again, we will learn a lot about how the system operates, how it functions uh, with humans in the loop, um, and things like that. And of course, there will be some scientific experiments. But again, the primary goals for the early ones is, is demonstrating that the system works as intended. What learning opportunities does NC State offer for students interested in space exploration and the engineering behind it? One of the things that, that takes place in the MAE department, we have a class in space exploration systems, and part of that class involves a, um, a project, and um, it's a project that's done with the RASCAL project. It's a, it's a NASA competition, and uh, in that competition, the, the students work on you know, various projects related to either exploration of the moon, exploration of Mars, or just general kind of space-related projects. We have a high-powered rocketry club that's actually uh, open to anyone on campus can participate in that. Um, and they build and fly these high-altitude, high-powered rockets. Um, there's a the uh, um, there's an organization called the Students for the Exploration and Development of, Spa of Space, SEDS, which is quite active on campus. Uh, there's the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics. Uh, there's a student chapter of that, and there's a lot of space-related um, activities that take place there. There is a liquid rocketry group on campus separate from the high power rocketry um, group. Um, we're also trying to get a, a satellite team uh, together. Um, that's very much in the, the early stages, but there's plenty, plenty going on uh, as far as research and, and student opportunities um, to get involved with real space missions and hardware.